Damn, son, where'd you find this? This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Jones. That beat drop. Yeah. Ah, this is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, hanging out with you for the next hour. So leave me a voicemail, 856 49 Hoppy. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. This award winning podcast known as Hoppy Hour can be heard in two places. Woohoo. First, it can be heard on the Quad Pod Network at qodpod.com slash Ryan Hoppy. And it can also be heard. On ZRadioLive.com every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time. And my talking head show known as Hoppy Hour Live is at NoFilter.net. The No Filter Network. Yeah. This podcast is for the people who wake up in the morning and grind their ass off. The people who run to their coffee pot and chug that scorching hot coffee. The people who won't give up no matter how hard life gets. The people who push their body to the limit just to get by in life. Because that's all you can do. This is Hoppy Hour. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Today I have an announcement to make. What is it, Ellen? Today... I am announcing that next season, season 19, is going to be my last season. This <laughs> it could not have happened to a better person. Because when I think of genuine, and when I think of just nice people, Ellen DeGeneres just oozes that. This show has been the greatest experience of my life. I've made millions off of you people thinking I'm a good person. And I owe it all to you. Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Man, I've seen a dead rat have better emotion than her. She can't even fake being grateful. DeGeneres tells her audience, all good things come to an end. But um, in this situation, what was the good thing? Your hack daytime TV show where you pretend to be something you're not? Oh, thank God it's coming to an end. Well, I hope I know when, when people kind of are tired of me. I yeah, think I'll sense we, that. We Ahead of Thursday's episode of her long-running talk show, mm -hmm. the comedian opens up about her decision to say goodbye. Two years ago, I signed... It's never a right time to say goodbye. Do, 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 that Chris Brown song from 2007. I signed a deal for three more years, and I always knew in my heart that season 19 would be my last. 19 is a... Wait. Like, What's the specific part of 19? Wouldn't you want to go 20 years? Like, oh, yeah. Congratulations on making it 19 years. When you turn 19, it means absolutely nothing. But, oh, because I'm getting canceled, I'm pretending I'm going out on my own terms. Is a great number. First Why? First of all, the 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. Oh, okay. Well, you can go that way. And this may be controversial, but I believe that women should be allowed to vote. I've said it. There. <laughs> oh, she's really bringing the humor today. Said it. Jokes aside, Ellen took a moment to thank her fans for tuning in. Thank you guys for thinking that I'm a good person. The past 18 years, mm -hmm. you have to know, has changed my life. Yeah, I went from being semi-relevant to relevant to now irrelevant. You 
all have changed my life. Got it. And I am forever grateful to all of you for watching. Oh, are you grateful? Because your face says uh, you're a sociopath. For laughing, for dancing, sometimes crying. Yeah, that's how you got the party going. You never knew how to interact with actual females or actual human beings that weren't millionaires. So you would resort to dancing because you have no personality. <laughs> Let's dance, Justin Bieber. <laughs> All right, enough of you. This show has been the greatest experience of my life. Not the sitcom? And I owe it all to you. <laughs> you can't even fake a cry, you sociopath. In all seriousness, I truly have felt like next season was the right time to end this amazing chapter. Why? Why was that the right time? But how do you end a show that's become a cultural phenomenon? It was just on a long time and she had no competition. I'm not saying it wasn't a big show, but... I never went, oh, my God, I'm watching greatness when I was watching Ellen. I'm just like, it's an okay show because it would be on after school, but I never was watching it, and I was like, oh, my, oh God, this is a cultural phenomenon. I don't know. All she can tease for now is that we are in for a celebration. 18 years ago, on the very first show, I said this was going to be a relationship, and we are going to continue that relationship. And since then, I've been a dirty, rotten, toxic imbecile. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. What are we going to do with her? Hoppy Hour will be right back. I'm right here. This following segment has been brought to you by FitSafeFitness.com. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best workout trainer in all of the Bay Area. I'm a man of my words. Go to fitstagefitness.com and set up a workout plan with him if you're in the Bay Area. But if you're not in the Bay Area, don't freak out. Don't have a panic attack. You can do virtual workouts and more. You got to make it happen, Captain. Fitstage Fitness. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Someone hook me up with a flame. I'm having a nut fit. Uh, light him up. A meat wad. Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my whiskey. I'm going to tore up. We shall acquire some wine on the way to the mall. And then you can get tore up. And pass out in the hot sun. That's my boy. I don't think Meatwad should be hanging around with these moon people. Poppy's mind is like a circus, and you're all invited. Welcome back to... Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in. next headline hey danielle how are you Hi. bad baby she was out shopping at the grove i talked to her about people saying only fans should be raised to 21 plus i think any bitch who says that is mad because they didn't make as much money as me on <laughs> you can say what you want about bad baby i don't know what i want to say because she was born in 2003 and it's just weird that she's on only fans even though she can be but uh she doesn't care what you think really they're saying it's it's uh, like child grooming I, i'm not groomed by nobody i make all my own decisions and i had right, been since i was very young <gasps> well, i don't think exactly. yeah <laughs> I don't think that's an endorsement for making decisions right. while you're young. <laughs> She's rich and famous. There's no question about it. She's yeah. rich and she is famous. I actually talked to her all And it's kind of weird. Like, So I was thinking about it. You know, like when you're on Pornhub and you're just hanging out, going through video after video, trying to find the right release. And it'll be like, hot 19-year-old 
bangs teacher. And you're like, okay. And like they, the 19 year old has like huge boobs and it's a good video or whatever. Oh, it doesn't matter what the boob size is. But what I'm saying is, you know, like when you watch that video and it feels less creepy, even though that person's pretty much the same age as bad baby. Here's the difference. And I came up with this concept. The difference is you didn't see that 19-year-old grow up. You didn't see that 19-year-old in eighth grade freak out on Dr. Phil. It's weird that bad baby broke the record on OnlyFans. It's weird that when she turned 18 at 1201, everybody went to the website to sign up. It's weird that she's getting all these text messages from dudes saying that they've been fans for a long time because if that is the truth, then they were fans when she was 14 years old. That's where it gets weird. Bad baby can do whatever she wants on OnlyFans. Bad baby can be a woman who expresses her body sexually, but it gets weird when it's like, yeah, you know, I'm OnlyFans, 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 only. It, you were just 14. Also, people are saying how if you're married and you're subscribing to someone on OnlyFans, people are saying that it's cheating. My boyfriend wouldn't do that, so I don't know what y'all boyfriends do. Y'all need to take that up with them. I <laughs> oh, shots fired by her. That's bad, cheating. dude. That's bad. People pay for porn, too, y'all. People- I don't pay for porn. Even if I was a millionaire, I would want to pay for all the, uh, like, Peacock, oh yeah, uh, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. I would never be like, oh, I want to pay for Pornhub. You know why? There's this magical, wonderful website called Spank Bank. I'm just saying. No, not really. <laughs> Only suckers pay for Pornhub. <laughs> Only the suckers, man. Because <laughs> uh, people will go. Oh, I thought my cat was throwing up in the background. It's very awkward. Oh, he's just playing with the food ball. That was weird. Uh, so what I'm saying is people will go, oh, my God, on Pornhub, it's only a 14-minute clip, and the first four minutes is acting. Well, well, Pornhub's not the only website out there. You, you can get some good pornography. Too bait to get it. Too bait. Uh, spank bank, X videos. So the idea of paying for porn it's not like you can get Netflix for free unless you really want to go down and get like a Cody device. I'm just saying, like, don't pay for porn. <gasps> Next on the Happy Hour. Aaron Rodgers seen shopping with fiance amidst Packers drama. <laughs> oh, Yoko Ono. The whole sports world is talking about Aaron Rodgers. Everybody has Yeah, to- we, we've kind of moved on, you know? Like, the whole sports world was talking about it, and then we're like, we'll wait for the breaking news. We don't really care anymore. But I know this guy on TMZ has to be the hype man. I know this guy on, TM- on TMZ has to get us all excited about a sociopathic all-time great quarterback. The whole sports world is talking about Aaron Rodgers. Everybody has an opinion whether he should stay in Green Bay, he should retire and go host Jeopardy. I don't care. And Aaron Rodgers could not care less. So there are these photos. We have that in common. Of Aaron Rodgers with his fiance Shailene Woodley in a grocery store. They are just completely wearing sweats. He has a beanie on, and it's just it's funny because you go on the internet, you go on social media, and really everyone is talking about this guy, and he really looks like he could not care less. Babcock, you could. I wonder if his parents and family that he doesn't talk to care. Couldn't be more wrong about this. Why? Aaron Rodgers started this. By complaining and wanting the general manager fired, wanting the backup mm-hmm. quarterback gone. Yeah, I know he did, but now that Babcock, this- you of all people should understand this. He was at a market getting food. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How dare Aaron Rodgers want to eat? Babcock has not stepped in a market in years. <laughs> a yeah. market. Yeah, there were yeah, yeah, organic market. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, they give too much is- shelf space to salad there. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in and say a double double, please. That's a market for. <laughs> Ah, the Ah, the TMZ humor that's never funny. Oh, you want to think about a nice orgy today? How about a triple date with Kendall and Devin Booker, Justin Bieber and his wife, and Travis Scott and Kylie? Oh, yeah. All right, let's see what the hell is going on. 
Nostradamus predicted many things. The atomic bomb, mm -hmm. the death of JFK, Got it. Velcro. But he never could have predicted that a fine seafood dinner would be shared by these six power players. Also, we're not 100% on the Velcro thing, but we're no. looking into that. Biggest triple date ever at Catch. So, Bieber's, Kendall, Jenner, and The biggest date ever. There's never been a bigger date. This was the biggest date ever. When you work at TMZ, you got to make everything seem ginormous. Also, we're not 100% on the Velcro thing, but we're looking into that. Biggest triple date ever hey, at Cash. So, the Biebers, Kendall Jenner, and her boyfriend, Devin Booker, and then Kylie and Travis Scott all together. That Kylie and Travis Scott relationship's weird. Like, you know, they're just having sex just to have sex. All went to dinner. Yes, Justin was there looking slightly Princess Leia-ish. Yeah, he's, he's got two man buns. It's kind of weird. Were Haley and Travis, also Devin and Kendall. Kylie was in photographs, so we just kind of added her ourselves. All righty. Big power dinner like this, like, it's so exciting. Are Travis and Kylie just totally back together now? I mean, he's hanging out with her sister on the like weekend. It. Hell yeah, he's hanging out with her. Mm. Yeah, we made a kid together. Yeah, we had some good sex together, and we're single, and I'm going to bang some side chicks, but want to have sex? And she's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. He was yeah. sucking her toes at his birthday. Yeah. Oh, that's not where I thought that was going. He wasn't Whoa. sucking the toes. He was just playing with them. Well, you start playing this little He's piggy, they end up in your mouth. <laughs> this guy's a little freaky. If you don't have sex after that, if you're the guy, and just suck the toes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's time for you to leave. Yeah, take like, care. Oh my God. <laughs> well, toe sucking notwithstanding, this was a weird man. Weird. Hell of a power dinner. I think it's more influential than power, to be honest. If you got a billion dollars, then you're pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah I know. But what, why is it that I'm hesitant on this? It's because you guys are boomers, Beckerman, Harvey. Beckerman. <laughs> <laughs> boomers. Um... Speaking of the Kardashians. Things are getting serious between Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. I think it's been serious for a minute. I think every time they have intercourse and they post about it on social media, passive aggressively, it's been pretty serious. But now that Entertainment Tonight says that the relationship between Kourtney and Travis Barker is serious, now it is. Not before. You got to always wait for the approval of Entertainment Tonight. A source tells ET the reality star's family has never seen her like this. I love what happy and not dating a sociopath like Scott Disick. Love it. The mom of three has been dating the Blink 182 drummer for a few months now, yeah. and according to ET source, the two are quote obsessed with each other. That's how it goes when you first begin dating somebody. Quote, they're so in love and constantly fawning over one another. Yeah, they're just beginning to date. They have such a strong connection and can't get enough of each other. Yeah, they're just beginning to date. The source knows that Travis makes Court feel so special and is always... And he protects her because he's a man, unlike that weirdo known as Scott Disick. Always showing her how much he loves her and yeah. how important she is to Got him. it. Quote, Courtney has been extremely loving towards him as well and has also been making a big effort to show how much she cares. Big effort. I love you. Oh, yeah, they're one of those couples. We got to let everybody know how much I love him and love her. And according to E.T. Source, the 42-year-old's famous fam is super happy for her. Mm -hmm. Quote, they're also in a little bit of shock because <gasps> they've never seen her like this before. What, in love? I'm just, like, living life and whatever. What, she's in love and in a relationship where it's not forced by her mom? happens happens yeah also shocking the risque gift travis got inspired by court One. on tuesday the musician took to his insta story to show off his heretic by goop candle <gasps> the scent it's called this smells like courtney's orgasm weird man weird <laughs> you know scott disick saw that and was like god damn it I didn't want to have to peek in the window tonight. The Keeping Up with the Kardashian star reposted the photo to her own Insta story. This is such a dream come true. Yeah. Courtney and Travis started dating in January, and in just a few short months, they, they had, had wild sex. 
vacation together, packed on the PDA, and Travis even got Court's name inked on his chest. But that's the annoying part is everyone's acting like it was the only tattoo he had. He literally made Pete Davidson look like he hadn't gotten a tattoo yet. So him adding the word Courtney to his chest really didn't mean that much. For Mother's Day, the 45-year-old went all out, gifting Court with a massive floral arrangement. And a source previously told E.T. that the two are talking forever. Oh, thank God. I'm sure it's going to go forever and ever. Next on the Happy Hour, we find out even more of how much of a dirty, rotten imbecile Chrissy Teigen is. Chrissy Teigen speaks out about the past comments she made to Courtney Stodden. Oh, I'm sure she goes, I'm horrified by it. I'm sure she's going to go, oh, I feel awful about it because it's been released now. If I felt so awful about it and I'm Chrissy Teigen, I would have addressed it sooner. But I'm a narcissist. I'm a sociopath. I'm a perfectionist. So I was never going to talk about it. On May 12th, the Lip Sync Battle co-host issued a statement on Twitter after... She would be a part of a show that's about lip syncing because that's all she would know how to do because she's got no talent. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. ...co-host issued a statement on Twitter after Stodden spoke to the Daily Beast about alleged interactions with Tegan in the past. Following the claims, the Daily Mail published screen grabs of Tegan's tweets from 2011 including one that reads, Courtney Stott in my Friday fantasy, you dirt nap, mmm, baby. <laughs> oh, but Chrissy Teigen gets so mad when she would tweet out, and I'm not getting, politi- I'm not getting political, hateful things about Donald Trump, and then all the Trump supporters would say awful things to her, and she's like, I'm a victim, I've never done this, I'm against bullying. It's called overcompensating because you did it 10 years ago, honey. <laughs> At the time, Stodden, who uses they, them pronouns, was 16 years old and married to actor Doug Hutchinson, who that, no, that's, that's, that whole sentence is weird. was then 51. Stodden claims in the Daily Beast interview that Tegan would, quote, privately DM me and tell me to kill myself. Things like, I can't wait for you to die. Tegan acknowledges these remarks in her statement, tweeting, not a lot of people are lucky enough to be held accountable for all their past bullshit in front of the entire But here's the thing. You're only being held accountable because it's coming out now. If you were so, whoa, Chrissy Teigen, if you were such an amazing person, you would have addressed it, I don't know, more recently. Not because you got caught, honey. Entire world. I'm mortified and sad at who I used to be. I'm I'm mortified and sad that I got caught. I was an insecure, attention-seeking troll. Now, don't use that as a past tense. Like, what are you now? A talented person? She continues, I am ashamed and completely embarrassed at my behavior, but that is nothing. I'm ashamed and embarrassed that I got caught. Compared to how I made Courtney feel. I have worked so hard to give you guys joy and be beloved, and the feeling of letting you down is nearly unbearable. Okay, here's the thing. First of all, I've never seen one of her tweets or one of the shows she's on, and I'm like, oh my God, she's bringing me so much joy. Thank God for this beautiful angel. I mean, she is pretty, but thank God for this angel. She brings so much to the table. Mm -hmm. And also this thing of the feeling of letting you down. Nobody's going, oh my God, I'm behind on my payment for my car. But Chrissy Teigen making fun of somebody I've never heard of 10 years ago. Oh, you let me down. That's called being a narcissist where you think the whole world revolves around you, but no one really cares. Truly. Tegan adds that she privately reached out to Stodden, adding, but since I publicly fueled all this, I want to also publicly apologize. I'm so... I'm just saying sorry because my publicist said that it'll be swept under the rug and next week I'll teach you all how to make cauliflower cake. Oh, sorry, Courtney. I hope you can heal now knowing how deeply sorry I am. Ten years later because I got caught because I got caught. Stodden told the Daily Beast, people came out of the woodwork to beat up on a kid because she was in a situation that she shouldn't have been in. There were. Yeah, but oh, I thought Chrissy Teigen was such a woke person. I thought she was such a feminist. If she was such a feminist and such a woke person, she would have tried to save Courtney Stodden and not make fun of her. You hypocritical. There were a lot of celebrities acting like playground bullies. Some of the worst treatment I got was from women, and we're not going to get anywhere if we keep holding each other back. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. 
Chrissy Teigen. But the thing is, no one's going to hold her accountable. No one's going to say anything. They're just going to let her keep on talking. They're going to let her just keep on babbling. They're going to let her just keep doing her thing. And nobody's going to ever say anything. Oh, wow. Wendy Williams got a wax figure. And no, I'm not talking about her every day on TV. Wendy Williams, I'm going to need you to talk to Portia, but... Wendy just unveiled a big surprise that had us doing a double take. Victor Cruz caught up with Wendy to talk about her. That's how, uh, never mind, I was going to talk about, never mind, it's going to make a wax figure joke. Exciting news. Wendy, you've officially been waxed. How does it feel? It feels wonderful. Yeah. Immortalized. She's beautiful. This is where I birthed my hand. On- She's prettier than me. We should put it in a Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Fisherman's Wharf. In San Francisco and say, believe it or not, this is a person that people think is humble and talented. Even though I'm a sociopathic imbecile that exploits people. I'm doing better than I exploited you. Now I got a wax figure that's got a better personality and more going for it than me. I'm a narcissist. I wonder what my neighbors think of my yelling. Hi, I'm Wendy Williams. And you tell me any inside information and I'll ruin your life. Kind of like hack Cleveland Shock Jocks. How you doing? Better now that I ruined your life. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, God, is she the worst? Oh, is she the absolute worst? On a crown roast, the Easter before the divorce. Now, when- All right, so she got waxed. <laughs> when I saw that she got waxed, I thought it meant something different. And I was like, oh, thank God, she's finally taking care of herself. But no, 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 no. <sighs> I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to take a deep breath. Ellen DeGeneres let her staff know she was ending her talk show a day before going public with the news. Yeah. E! News has learned. How? A source close to the matter reveals that Ellen called for a last-minute all-staff meeting on the afternoon of Tuesday, May 11th. All right, everybody. Log into Microsoft Zoom or Microsoft uh, Teams. And then broke the news about her departure. I'm sorry, guys. I know I exploited you and made you feel like garbage, but I know you're so sad about making 20 bucks an hour full-time. The talk show host seemed very sad, the insider says. Mm -hmm. It's been an incredibly emotional week for Ellen. Yeah. Another source close to Ellen tells E! News, it was a very hard thing for her to tell her team. Yeah, because it's like I'm a narcissist and it's me admitting that I failed. As for what's next for DeGeneres? Uh, to go away for an ever and ever. Oh, we can only hope. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. I don't know why, but every time I talk about her, I think of the Wicked Witch of the West. Happy hour will be right back. But I'm right here hanging out with you. When a client comes to our. Yo, Stacy. Yeah. Got it. This following segment has been brought to you by the best martial arts coach in all the Bay Area. When I tell you that Amir Academy of Martial Arts is the best, I'm a man of my words. Oh, I've been going there, getting into shape, feeling alive. Oh, I feel great. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, classes at 6 p.m. Go to amiracademy.com for all the info, and you will see me there in my uncoordinated self. Getting into shape. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. It's like a uh, $9,000 prostitute, please. Oh, do you have nine $1,000 ones? Yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. In uh, like 20 minutes, I'm going to be asleep, so get them up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole f- bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. 856-49-HOPPY. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too.
get some. Can you see if we can get in the papers? I'm trying to get <laughs> could some I, more could publicity. I, ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez's reunion has been a gift, and now we know who to thank. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez for cheating on her. I think we had chemistry as actors That's from, from the first moment we started working. A source tells E.T. that Affleck was the one who made the first move, which then led to their romantic rekindling. Oh, yeah. You know, he's laying there in bed like, woohoo! The source says Ben has always had an affinity for Jennifer. Yeah, and was the I one feel like you don't just get over her after you break up. One who initially started pursuing her and making an effort to reconnect, romantically speaking. He wanted to explore things with her beyond a friendship, and they've both really been enjoying spending time together. <laughs> These new details follow sightings of the pair in Montana together over the week. Yeah, I feel like Montana's where all the celebrities go to get away. Weekend, after Affleck was previously spotted multiple times at her Los Angeles home. Yeah, he was hanging out in Los Angeles, and everyone found out that they were banging. So he's like, we gotta go to... Montana. I don't want to give it away, but it has a very good ending. <laughs> Affleck and Lopez began dating in 2002, quickly followed by the couple announcing their engagement. Yeah. But in 2003, the wedding was called off just days before their planned ceremony in September. What is the chance that they get engaged? I would say pretty good because she's going through a mid-life crisis if she's going back to exes. They officially called off the engagement in January 2004. No, that was the worst month ever but remained on friendly terms following the split. Yeah, you can tell they remained on friendly terms of their bang at 17 years later. We were about to get married. It didn't work out, mm -hmm. and it was just a bad heartbreak. Like, you know, yeah, that was bad and terrible. You know, just one of those breakups that really, you know, it was like a tough one for me for whatever reason. So sh You don't say. Should we be shocked by this reunion? Shocked. Maybe not according to those in their inner circles. Yeah. Another source previously told E.T. it wasn't a huge surprise to their friends who knew they had stayed in touch over the years. Yeah, they're sending texts. You ready yet? No. Next year. You ready yet? No. Next year. You ready yet? Alex Rodriguez cheated on me. Let's do it. Woohoo! The source added, Ben is protective over J-Lo and they're trying to be as low-key as possible. Sounds like insecurity. We like him. We need to control that. <laughs> he lost it the first time. He ain't trying to lose it the second time. I don't know how that happened. And this resurgence arrives not too long after Affleck went to bat for his ex, calling out the vicious response to their past relationship. Listen, I've never met Ben Affleck. I know he had a drinking problem in the past, but the B-roll footage they are showing on this clip where you see him and J-Lo just hanging out. You can tell he's just better for her than A-Rod. There's always a story. But then again, uh, a dead rat is better for her than A-Rod the vicious response to their past relationship. There's always a story of the month. Me dating Jennifer Lopez happened to be that tabloid yeah. story at the time mm -hmm. when that business grew exponentially. Yeah. In January, the 48-year-old actor appeared on the Hollywood Reporter's Award Chatter podcast, <sighs> where he didn't mince... Why weren't you on Happy Hour, bro? ...words for critics of their early 2000s romance. And at first, it was like Dick and Liz. It was this sort of infatuation. What an interesting couple. And then there was a ton of resentment, a ton of resentment against me, a ton of resentment against Jennifer. People were so f***ing mean about her, sexist, racist, you know, oh, wow. ugly, vicious shit was written about her. Got music. it. Uh, if you wrote it now, you would literally be fired yeah. for saying those things yeah. you said. Affleck also highlighted. Yeah, he does protect her better than A-Rod because A-Rod was cheating. The brighter side of this story in the years since. The overwhelming praise Lopez has received for her wide-ranging career. Now it's like she's lionized and respected for the work. Respected? What was that? She's lionized and respected for the. <laughs> he just had a Ryan Hoppy speech impediment moment. Now it's like she's. And what's going on? Lionized and respected for. <laughs> respected. Lion eyes. I gotta do this one more time. Lion eyes and what? Lion eyes and respect for. All I want in radio is to be. And respect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Respected. All right. Did A Rod throw shade at J Lo and Ben Affleck? Yeah, because he's a loser. Did Alex Rodriguez throw shade at his ex fiance Jennifer I just said Lopez that. and Ben Affleck? Yeah. 
The former Yankees player was asked about J-Lo being spotted in Montana with her ex, and he gave a cryptic response saying, Go Yankees! Oh, what a loser! <laughs> the same team that I cheated on! <laughs> the same way that I cheated on my girlfriend! <laughs> my fiancé! <laughs> Shut up! According to page 6, a source previously told People that Jen spent several days with Ben out of town. Mm -hmm. They have a strong connection. It's all been quick and intense, but Jennifer is happy. All right, it's been very intense. Yeah. <sighs> Next on the happy hour. We'll find out right after this. Happy, happy, happy. This is happy hour. Yeah. Happy hour will be right back. Oh. Yeah. Oh. This following segment. Oh. Let's let this unlicensed beat rot out first. Oh, yeah. It was brought to you by the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company. At TampaBayHotSauce.com has all the locations where you can buy the best hot sauce in person in Florida and online if you don't live in Florida. And tag them at Tampa Bay Hot Sauce at Ryan Happy Radio. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. I got PhDs in four scientific disciplines. Really? Why do you think they call me Dr. Quinn? Um, I just thought that was a nickname. You know, like Dr. Dre. East Side. God, you're stupid. Hey, shut your hat. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Is your significant other driving you nuts? The self-proclaimed expert Ryan Hoppy will listen to your problems at 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-49-HOPPY. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Damn, son, where'd you find this? On uh, YouTube. In a new interview, Lil Nas X opened up about feeling jealous of Billie Eilish after she won a Grammy Award they were both nominated for and how he's now killed off his jealousy. By saying he's killed off his jealousy because if he was over his jealousy, he wouldn't have to talk about his old jealousy because he's still holding on to it, Lil Nas X, you phony. Let's get into it. Okay. Back in early 2020, just weeks before the world went into lockdown, we got to see one of the final in-person award shows of the year, the Grammys. Which that nobody watched. That night, Billie Eilish made history by taking home five Grammys in all the major categories. Yeah, that wasn't rigged at all. And while it seemed like Billy won every single award that night, Lil Nas X actually took home two Grammys for Best Pop Duo and Best Pop Music Video for his Old Town Road remix. Mm -hmm. But despite taking home two Grammys, Lil Nas X just told British GQ that he was jealous of Billy when he lost to her in the Record of the Year category. Well then keep grinding and make a new record, you loser. Bad guy Billy Eilish. <laughs> Producer, Phineas O'Connor. In that moment, you see Lil Nas X say, okay, as Billy won, and when... Yeah, he's a little sassy. Looking back on that night, Lil Nas X recalled what he was really thinking when Billy Eilish took the stage. He was thinking, that should have been me. Someone hooked up. Oops, wrong button. That should have been me. I'm Lil Nas X, and I'm an entitled Generation z -er. He told GQ he was thinking, damn, but how? I have the biggest song. That isn't fair. Um, he should be pictured in the dictionary under the word narcissism. And Nas said that he spent many months of quarantine killing off his jealousy. He could have spent quarantine making new music, but nope. He said that being a loser that's made millions. Lockdown forced him to take a break, though he hates taking time off and he was Oh, yeah. Well, you have taken time off. Besides that one devil song, I mean, you're kind of irrelevant. Besides the fact that you're on TikTok making videos. 
Is able to look back on that night and his feelings towards Billy with a new perspective. And you see a picture of him and Billy and she looks all happy next to him and he looks all sad because he's a phony. He's not somebody you'd want to hang out with. Speaking of somebody you wouldn't want to hang out with because she would cheat on you. Miley Cyrus as she reflects on the marriage that nobody talks about the fact that she cheated on Liam. Uh, Can you imagine laying next to that at night? Oh, God. Uh, uh, Make it stop. Uh, uh, Miley Cyrus. Not so good about the auto tune now, huh? This is taking a bittersweet trip down memory lane. Of when I cheated on my husband and the media didn't cover it. The music superstar reflected on her relationship with ex-husband Liam Hemsworth. Yeah, she cheated on. On a meaningful milestone. Sharing with Instagram followers that May 12th marked the four-year anniversary of her hit song Malibu, which was inspired by her and Liam's life together in the beach. Yeah, it's always a good idea when you make a song about your significant other. <laughs> That always turns out well. Side City. Miley posted a clip of herself recording Malibu, and she looked back on how special the track still is to her. If this song was about their relationship, oh, it was doomed. This moment. Uh, I'm going to cheat on you with a woman and get away with it because the media won't cover it correctly. Miley Cyrus is taking... I mean, listen to this. Uh, uh, Sounds like the cat in the back of a veterinarian getting shot. Dear God, we're going to pretend that's talent. (laughs) Miley posted a clip of herself recording Malibu, and she looked back on how special the track still is to her. Writing in her caption... Today is the four-year anniversary of Malibu, a song about a place and person that at the time I loved very much. Why don't you just hurt him a little more, you dirty, rotten, sociopathic imbecile? That love was reciprocated beyond what I could describe here with freedom and escapism. Then I cheated on him with a woman, because I'm kinky. I lost that home, along with many others, in 2018. Here is a video of me writing it in my home studio. That sentence is the only part of the... That sentence is the only part of this whole paragraph that I feel bad for, losing the house. Not the fact that I lost the love that I cheated on that no one covers because I was officially separated from Liam when I began sleeping with Kaylin Carter. Miley and Liam's Malibu house burned down in the devastating Woolsey fire that ravaged Southern California in 2018. Mm -hmm. She and the Australian actor were engaged at the time and tied the knot that December a decision which she told Howard Stern on his Sirius XM radio show I've last year may not have happened if it weren't for the sudden tragedy and how it shifted her perspective on life. Yeah, I'm going to cheat on him. I bet Howard asked a really tough questions about cheating. I never. I don't know if we really ever thought we were actually going to get married, but when we lost... Yeah, we're going to get married. I sound like a chicken I smoke about it. It's had nine cigarettes and just swallowed all of them. Our house in Malibu, which wild. if you listen to my voice pre and post fire, they're very different. So that yeah, I smoked a lot. That trauma really affected my voice. And my mouth was really busy. Every song I had ever written was in that house. Yeah. Every photograph of me that my parents had given to me, all my scripts, like I lost yeah. everything. And so in trying to put that back together, mm-hmm. instead of going, oh, nature kind of did something I couldn't do for myself. It forced me to let go. Yeah, I blame nature. I ran towards the fire. Me being an intense person yeah. and not one. You're intense, also a cheater. Wanting to sit with it and not wanting to go, you know, what could be. What could... Right, I can't take it. I mean, I feel bad if the house burned down, but not for anything else. What the hell is going on with Matthew Perry? 19 year old TikToker Kara Harrelson was just kicked off of Raya after calling out Matthew Perry for being a Hollywood man who takes advantage of younger women on dating apps. Yeah, it's called being a middle-aged, um, past-year-prime actor. Let's get into the story. 
Earlier this week, 19-year-old Kate Harrelson went viral for posting a private FaceTime call she had with 51-year-old Matthew Perry. On This is the problem when they're going on these dating apps of the rich and elite. You have these gold diggers that are going to try to expose you for relevancy because no one heard of her before. TikTok. The two supposedly matched on the dating app Raya, and according to Page Six, Kate posted the video of their FaceTime session to expose how older men in Hollywood are taking advantage of younger women on dating apps. But if you were so against it, why'd you have the age range into the 50s? You liar. In her TikTok, Kate wrote, when you match with Matthew Perry as a joke on a dating app and because you need attention because you're irrelevant and you have raging daddy issues. And he FaceTimes you and plays 20 questions with you. Oh no. Heaven forbid a 50 year old that matches on a legal app that's consensual plays 20 questions. That's actually kind of cute and adorable. Then she tossed to the video clip of their FaceTime call. Yeah. Do you always play with your hand this morning? <laughs> um, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, so originally Kate received some backlash. For One tweet. It's just another Gen Z cloud chaser. Ever heard of age preference? Try setting your age to someone you feel comfortable. Yeah, heaven forbid a 50-year-old midlife crisis like Matthew Perry want to bang a 20-year-old. Heaven forbid it be consensual. <laughs> Loser for sharing this video and spoke to page six saying a lot of people were saying I'm a bully and mean for posting this you and are. it made me feel kind of bad but at the same time I feel a lot of guys in Hollywood are talking to all these young girls and oh you're like such an activist you cloud chaser oh it's bowed down to you you're such an activist the way you're exposing consensual relationships oh it should bow down to your greatness it's your worst mm. Ugh, enough of you. That was me trying to get the loser sound effect. You're a loser. 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 That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Something I think a lot of people should be aware of. Oh, let's bow down to your greatness, you no name hack cloud chaser. She said, while well, none of And if you would have married him, you would have taken half his money. Questions during their conversation were sexual. She still felt uncomfortable and told the outlet that at one point, Matthew asked her, am I as old as your dad? <laughs> oh, this is a funny thing. And interestingly enough, Kate said she was inspired to post this video after Naveen Jay's recent Raya moment with Ben Affleck. Yeah, because you're a no-name hack on original copycat loser. Went viral on TikTok. We... Oh, and I'm sure you matched with Matthew Perry because of his good looks and relevancy and it had nothing to do with his bank account, you cloud-chasing loser. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Yeah, it does. Here comes the money. When you're an average-looking cloud-chaser. <laughs> dollar, dollar. Dollar, dollar. Loser. We covered that whole situation in another clever video that oh, I will God. link above for you. Oh, thank Kate God. said that she and Naveen are actually in touch now after their celebrity Raya moments have circulated, but unlike Naveen, Kate decided to delete her post. She said she started to feel bad because she says Matthew really was a nice guy and she- Oh, he's such a nice guy, but I'm going to throw him under the bus because I'm a hack. Oh, shut up doesn't think he had malicious intent then why did you post it shut up when you're hypocritical you know you know you got caught and you know no one agreed with you so now you're like oh but he was such a nice guy even though i threw him under the bus shut up well 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 how the turntables oh whatever and you know matthew perry's matthew perry's laying there banging some other girl like oh whatever she's a <laughs> chaser hoppy 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 this is hoppy hour Ugh. We need to get Matthew Perry a good girl, man. Happy hour will be right back. We need to get him a girl that's gonna take care of him because you know he's he's just out of his mind. He's a maniac, maniac. Installing brand new car. You know what? I'm not in the mood. I was trying to play an instrumental beat and it's not doing it for me, so we'll just do the live read here. This is being brought to you by RichKBarber.com, the best barber in all of the Bay Area. If you go to Rich K Barber at Salon Loft on West Shore Boulevard and you tell him that I sent you, oh, he will hook you up with the best deal possible. The best haircut. Let's get some non-licensed music. Oh, yeah. This is awesome. 
being brought to you by westchaseprinting.com. Posters, yard signs, business cards, whatever the hell you need. Banners, westchaseprinting.com will hook you up. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy's mind is like a circus, and you're all invited. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. I am loved. I'm not alone. That's how I want to feel, but I don't I don't feel like that. Mm-hmm. Lizzo just got real with fans and she broke down in an emotional TikTok saying that she feels like she's a burden to everyone. Well, thank God you're not loud. Let's get into everything Lizzo had to say and where she's at now. Everyone has really tough days sometimes, mm-hmm. even the most positive celebs like Lizzo. And well, Liz- obviously she's not that positive if she's having a breakdown on social media. Lizzo turned to TikTok in a moment of need where she admitted that she was feeling like a burden on everyone. Trust me, you're not. We all have our own problems. We don't care. You know that part of sadness where you feel like a burden on everyone and annoying? Uh, yeah. And nobody cares about you? <sighs> Can we get rid of that part? Yeah, it's called go to a shrink and get some help. Next on the happy hour before we end. <laughs> Tom Cruise is opening up about the leaked audio recording that featured him yelling at crew members on the set of Mission Impossible 7. A Scientologist actor yelling and not being human? Who would have thought? (laughs) They bring out such normal people in that religion. For ignoring COVID-19 safety protocols. The explosive recording was leaked last year and made headlines worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now, the action star is opening up about that incident to Empire Magazine. Tom told the mag that he stands by his outburst, adding that there was a lot at stake in that tense moment. True. Quote, I said what I said. There was a lot at stake at that point. All those emotions were going through my mind. He said in part of the interview that Empire published online Wednesday. Quote, you know what's more free? You know what's more frightening than uh, the religion of Scientology? Getting a tour of Tom Cruise's brain. I was thinking about the people I work with and my industry. And for the whole crew to know that we started rolling on a movie was just a huge relief. It was very emotional, I gotta tell you. Tom Cruise having an emotion. That's a first. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour. Go to every single platform and search up Hoppy Radio. H-O-P-P-E Radio. RyanHoppyRadio.com. RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Guess what? Happy hour is now over. Oh, it is. Happy hour is now over. Yeah. Happy hour is now over. Oh, thank God. And like that, 